Hello everyone, this is Dr. C. Today's pre-lecture will focus on ice, ice tables. Isn't that exciting? Okay, so if you were in class today, we worked most of this problem that you can see on your screen, hopefully. Um, I'm going to reset it up. If, you want, if you're comfortable with the setup of this problem, you might want to scroll ahead in the video and save yourself a little time. But I'm going to write out the ice table here. All right, so there's our equilibrium. Initial, we have two moles in a five liter vessel of CO2. That's 0.4 molar CO2. I'm gonna go relatively quickly because we did do this in class today. Doesn't say anything about the product, so we assume that there's zero at the start, and they are. It just says you're starting with CO2, okay? We know some of the CO2 is going to go to product. Even though this Kc is very small, which tells us at equilibrium we will have mostly reactant. Make sure you know what the magnitude of K tells you. A really small K, products of a reactant, you must have a lot more reactant than product. Reactants predominate at equilibrium. So we know we're going to have mostly reactant, but we will have some product. We'll have a small amount of product. So we're going to say the amount of reactant that goes to product is 2x, we do use a negative sign because that amount is the amount of reactant is reacting, it's decreasing. The number matches the coefficient. Therefore, we will produce 2x of CO and x of O2. And at equilibrium, these are how we're representing the equilibrium concentrations in terms of x. Okay? So this is an ice table. E initial change equilibrium. We will do these a lot. Really try to focus on setting these up correctly. If you do not set your ice table up correctly, you're not going to get the right answer as we continue with this problem. All right, so I'm just going to move over here to the right. So we write out our equilibrium constant expression, products raised to the power of the coefficients over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient, so coefficients of 2 there for both CO and CO2. We plug in Alright, so we take our equilibrium concentrations from our table, we plug those in to our KC expression. All right. That's the setup. Now, once you get familiar with these problems, the setup each time, the ice table plugging into the equilibrium constant expression, is going to look very, very familiar every time you do it. Yes, there will be small changes based on the coefficients in the balanced equation, and so on. But this general way of solving an equilibrium problem, this ice table, it's going to be the same procedure over and over and over again. We will do this a lot. Okay, so try to get used to it early. You'll see this a lot. Now, very, very, very important assumption. Because our K is very small, and I wanted to get a different color pen here. It didn't do it. There it goes. Because our K is very small, we know that we're going to have mostly reactant at equilibrium. So very little of that reactant will go to product. So the amount that we have represented of reactant going to product is that 2x term. We know that's going to be really small. Okay? And again, the magnitude of K tells you that. Very small K, mostly reactant. Very little reactant will go to product. Very, very, very important assumption that we're going to make here. We will use it a lot. Small K, 0.4 in this case, minus a really small number, we're going to approximate to say it's going to stay about the same. It's going to decrease, but we're going to say, well, since K is really small, not much reactant will go to product. That number will stay fairly close to what we started with. Okay, so the initial is not going to change much. Okay, there are two problems in the pre-lecture quiz in Sapling that you will make this assumption. 
I think the first two, there's three questions in the quiz. The first two, you're going to make this assumption. Note the magnitude of K, and then you're assuming the X is small compared to your reactant concentration. We can't get rid of these product concentrations. They are by themselves. They are not small compared to anything else. So note, we're saying X, 2X in this case, is small compared to 0.4. Therefore, 0.4 minus that really small number stays about 0.4, okay? Now, what that does for us is it greatly simplifies. If we multiplied all of this out over here, we would have a cubic equation. What we're going to do instead is we're going to say approximately, now, 2x squared, it, 2 times 2 is 4x squared, so 4x squared times x. In the numerator, we get 4x cubed. And in the denominator, this 0.4 minus 2x, we're going to say is just 0.4. Now, it's still squared. We have that squared term there. So we're substituting 0.4 for 0.4 minus 2x. This makes our calculation a heck of a lot easier. We're going to end up with, let's see, 2 times 10 to the negative 6th times 0.4 squared. Okay, that's 3.2 times 10 to the negative 7th, 4x cubed. Okay, divide by 4. And let me just double check this, that I did this calculation right. I don't want to mess this up in the pre-lecture. Okay, that looks good. Now... We're almost done. We have x cubed, we need x. How do we get to, to x? We need to take the cube root, which some calculators have a cube root key. It's equivalent to raising to the one-third power. We have to do that to both sides of the equation. x, let's see, should come out to be, let's, uh, how many sig figs do we have? Let's carry a couple more sig figs, or at least one more, than we have. I think we only have two, but let's carry 4.31 times 10 to the negative third units. Okay, this is not K. This is concentration at equilibrium. These are molarity. Okay? All right, we're still not quite done. Still not quite done. It says calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all species. So, concentration of O2 is equal to x. So, 4.31 times 10 to the negative third molar. That was easy. Concentration of CO is equal to 2 times x, which is 8.62 times 10 to the negative third molar. And concentration of CO2, our reactant, is 0.4 minus 2x. which to two sig figs is 0.39 molar. There you go. There are our answers. We are done with this problem. So, a couple things to point out there. Did the concentration of the reactant stay pretty much the same? Did it stay about 0.4? Yes, 0.39. Okay. So it will change slightly, but again, we're making an approximation. Approximations are good if they're good approximations. Does that make sense? Approximations are good if they're good approximations. Um, so if your K is really small, 10 to the negative 6 in this case, not much reactant will go to product. So 0.4 minus 2x stays about 0.4, which we see. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is pause this and check your work. Plug all these concentrations back into your equilibrium constant expression and see if you get that K value. You need to get in the habit of checking your work when you can. So just pause this, check it right now. I'm going to keep going. One more problem. So the first two problems of pre-lecture quiz, you're going to make that assumption that X is small compared to the initial concentration. All right, watch for that. Now, the third calculation in the pre-lecture quiz is going to be kind of like this one. And this is another important math skill you need to work on. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. And I hope it will give me more space here. Let me just go ahead and grab some more space while I can. 
Oops, not, okay, let's scroll back up. Okay, so we're gonna set up our ice table again. So here's our reaction. All right, initial says 0.3 moles of H2, 0.3 moles CO2, and a 10 liter vessel. All right, so this would be, okay, moles divided by liters, 0.03. I'm just gonna write molar here by my initial so I don't have to put it by each one, okay? No products, zero to start. Change, we're certainly not at equilibrium. We will have some product at equilibrium, and actually quite a bit of product, because our K is, you know, a pretty normal looking K. It's 0.5, so it's not really small, it's not really large. So we're gonna have roughly, you know, we're gonna have not equal amounts of reactants of products, but they're gonna be relatively close in this case. Minus X, minus X, plus X, plus X. All the coefficients are one. It's a nice, easy reaction. So again, reactants are going to products. They will decrease. We are producing product. Equilibrium. There's your ice table. You can see it looks a little bit different than the previous problem because our reaction is balanced differently. Um, we have, I think we only had one product in our previous reaction, and this one we have two, but the setup's the same. We're going to write our KC expression. We're going to plug in KC 0.534. X times X is X squared. 0 0.03, 0 0.03 minus x times 0 0.03 minus x. Okay, so I've kind of shortcutted here because I want to get to the answer. Now, so I plugged in x and x here, which is x squared. I plugged in 0 0.03 minus x, 0 0.03 minus x, which is 0 0.03 minus x squared. All right, now, it really wouldn't be that difficult to solve this. We could rearrange this, get a quadratic equation. Yes, and you guys know quadratic equations. I know you do. And we could solve that. And we're actually gonna work one of those in class, and I do expect you to know how to solve a quadratic equation. But this one, we don't have to. And the reason we don't have to in this case is because we have a squared term in the numerator and a squared term in the denominator. Okay, that's kind of nice, because since both of those are squared, we can take the square root of that. The square root of x squared is just x. The square root of 0 0.03 minus x squared is just 0 0.03 minus x. That's kind of nice. Watch for that. Some, some problems will work out like this, particularly if you start with the same amount of each reactant like we did, and your coefficients are the same. Okay, I assume you noticed there was a little interruption there. Um, had some students come by for office hours. Um, so let's just keep going. So I can't remember exactly where I left off, um, but I will expect you to be able to solve a quadratic equation. We'll do that in class. Watch for one, I think the third problem in the pre-lecture quiz. Um, you can take the square root of both sides. You have an x squared term numerator, denominator. Of course, if we take the square root of the right-hand side of the equation, we have to take the square root of the left-hand side of the equation. And so square root of 0.534, that's going to give us, okay, let's carry a few extra sig figs, 0 0.7308, and then x square root of x squared is x, square root of 0 0.03 minus x squared, and square root of that is just going to be 0 0.03 minus x, all right? So we still have to do a little algebra here um, to solve this. So I'm gonna cross multiply. We do have to distribute, so we have to take 0 0.7308 times 0 0.03, also times negative x, and then set it equal to x on this side. So we'll have x here. We're going to have 0 0.7308 times 0 0.03, which give us point. 0, 0.0219 minus 0 0.7308x, okay? Add 0.7308x to both sides, 1.7308x 
is equal to 0 0.0219. All right, divide by 1.7308. I still have more digit, digits in my calculator for that number, so I'm just going to divide. And I come up with an x value of 0 0.0127 units. We were working with molar concentration, molarity. All right, have we finished the problem? Not quite. Okay, so there's our x value. All right, so if we scroll back up, both H2O concentration and CO are both equal to x, which is 0 0.0, let me just double check, 127 molar. Okay, and H2 and CO2 are both 0 0.03 minus x, so minus 0 0.0127. So those concentrations will come out to be 0 0.0173 molar. Okay, there you go. So the two things that you're going to see in this pre-lecture quiz that are really important for us, and the one that's the most important is that assumption. If you have a very small K, the X compared to the initial will be small, so we're going to assume the initial stays about the same. Very important assumption. We will see that a lot as we move forward. We'll see it for weak acids and weak bases as well. We'll see it for solubility problems. We're going to see it throughout equilibrium. And then this one is um, a simplification you will see sometimes where you can take the square root, say, of both sides of the equation. Okay? Save you some time over working at solving a quadratic equation. Now, why don't we, um, and you don't need to keep listening if, you, if you've, you're good with this, but I'm gonna just going to show the um, checking my work here. We ended up with our KC was x squared over 0 0.03. Oh, actually, let's not do that. Let's go back up to the original. Let's go up to that. And I can't see my equation now, sorry. H2O and CO. And H2 and CO2. And let's plug in our values that we got here. And for the two bottom ones, and we should get very close to our KC value. And I get 0.539. Is that what our KC was? Our KC was 0.534. Okay, now that's pretty close. Clearly, if we had carried more sig figs, okay, maybe this number is not 0 0.0127, maybe this number is 0 0.01266, okay? I don't know what it is, but that will obviously change our K. But we're very close. Check. It looks like we did our work correctly. Okay, enough for now. Really try to get a handle on these ice tables. We will do more of this in class. See you soon.